The Red Raiders will look to get back on track and back in the win column as they head down to Waco to face a top 25 Baylor Bear team. In today's video, we'll preview the game, the players to watch, the must-watch matchups, as well as the odds and prediction. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxwell here for the Back to 12 podcast. And before we get into today's preview video, give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Home Field Apparel. If you want to save 15% on your new favorite Texas Tech Vintage t-shirt, sweatshirt, jacket, and much more, go to homefieldapparel.com and use the code BACK TO 12 to save 15% on your entire order and get your new favorite Texas Tech shirt today. All right. Before we get into the prediction as well, leave me your score prediction down on the pinned comment below for Texas Tech at Baylor, two teams that are tied for second in the Big 12 heading into this matchup at a 5-3 and three record for both squads. Let me know your score prediction down on the pinned comment below. All right, let's set the scene. Foster Pavilion, first time Texas Tech will head down there to the new arena for the Baylor Bears. Tip-off is scheduled for 8 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. You've got a couple of guys that are probably two of the best in the Big 12, in my opinion. You got Chucky. It's always fun to say Chucky. Chucky Kemp. And then you got Chris Spatola as well as the analyst. Now, the history between Texas Tech and Baylor, as we all know, goes way back in time, all the way back to 1937 tech actually leads the all-time series by a record of 82 to 64 now baylor is 39 and 30 against texas tech in the friendly well parameters of waco i guess the city limits of waco and baylor has won seven of the last 10 now as i mentioned this is the first time that texas tech will play in waco in the new foster pavilion Right now, as it stands, Baylor is 3-1 and one in the Foster Pavilion headed into this game with the Red Raiders. Now, the Red Raiders will also play Baylor in the season finale out in the 806, one of the few teams that Texas Tech actually has a home and away, just like, well, the previous Big 12. But coming into this matchup, the Ken Palm rankings for both squads. Baylor is ahead of Texas Tech. Baylor comes in as the 16th best team, according to Ken Palm, in his rankings, and the Red Raiders come in at 32nd. According to the net rankings, Baylor 15th, Texas Tech 33rd. So there's a sizable gap in terms of a lot of key metrics that the committee will look at and also metrics that you look at in terms of the whole body of work going into this game. It's going to be interesting because, again, Texas Tech, Baylor, history goes back to 1937. Baylor has really, let's just call it what it is, dominated this series the past 10 matchups. Can Texas Tech get back in the win column and really get things going? We'll talk about who has to step up for the Red Raiders in this one. But before we do, if you want to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, and not just Texas Tech men's basketball, we're talking Big 12 here on the channel. We're going to have region breakdowns when the bracket is finally announced oh and by the way we'll talk about texas tech football as spring football is not too uh in the distant future we'll talk about that position breakdowns for texas tech football and much more here on the most engaging texas tech youtube channel on youtube and the fastest growing texas tech youtube channel here on the back to 12 podcast channel all right, let's get into players to watch for Texas Tech in this one. It starts with Pop Isaacs. I have to bring him up in every preview video, every game preview video for the Red Raiders because night in and night out, Pop Isaacs has to perform at a high level for Texas Tech in order for them to compete at the upper echelon of the Big 12. Now, you're going to have other guys step up. There's no doubt about it. But Pop Isaacs is your star. Let's just call it what it is. He can be frustrating at times in terms of the efficiency, but when Pop Isaacs goes, this is how far this team is going to go. It's really that simple for me. And it's going to be really interesting to see what Scott Drew does in terms of throwing different looks at Pop Isaacs because there's quite a few guys on this Baylor Bear team that can create problems for Pop. Now, that's not to be said Pop can't beat it. He's a good enough player to do so. But it will be interesting to see the kind of different looks that Scott Drew and crew throw at Pop Isaacs in this matchup. Now, we know what kind of different looks Warren Washington's going to get. He's going to get physical um, all game long. I mean, there's just going to be a different level of physicality now for Warren Washington moving forward in the Big 12. You've seen it really over the past couple weeks, and Warren's done a solid job, but you've seen it from a rebounding perspective for Texas Tech as a team. 
they're going to have to get better at helping Warren Washington on the boards. Maybe that means trying to not get out and transition as much and just securing a rebound on the defensive glass. But Warren Washington is going to play a physical game. That's what Baylor's going to want to do against him. And defensively, he will need to be patient in the pick and roll. They're going to try and space him out and really create some cut lanes, just like Texas Tech will offensively as well against the Baylor Bigs on that baseline. That's what Baylor's going to try and do, and that will also create open looks in terms of the guys guarding the corners will have to collapse a little bit and help catch and shoot opportunities for Baylor. That's really what they're going to try to do. Offensively, look for Warren Washington to be involved in the passing as well and try and do exactly what I just said Baylor was going to do offensively. Texas Tech will try to do the same as Warren Washington is one of the better passers on this Texas Tech team. Now, the other guy you have to watch out for is Chance McMillan. He has to be the second go-to guy offensively in this game. I, I thoroughly believe that. You know, Kerwin Walton's going to knock down some shots, but Kerwin doesn't create offensively um, in terms of for himself. Darion Williams, he'll have his hands full with the guy we'll talk about for Baylor here in just a second. Chance is going to have to have one of those games. Maybe not the Oklahoma game or the Butler game, but Chance is going to have to get in that 15, 16, 17-point range to really help out Pop and potentially get Texas Tech to pull the upset down at Foster Pavilion. I would also be interested to see Chance McMillan in the pick-and-roll game. Him as the primary ball handler with Warren Washington, space the floor, put Pop out there, Darion and Kerwin. I want to see that a little bit more, but it'll be interesting to see how much that actually comes to fruition. Now, on the Baylor side, I'm high on the Baylor Bears. I think that they're a team that really could make a ton of noise in March. And it starts, in my opinion, from a star talent perspective with Jacoby Walter. I mean, he is an absolute bona fide stud. That's what he is. He's an NBA lottery pick. And as a true freshman, he leads the Baylor Bears in scoring. He can beat you off the bounce. He can beat you off the catch and shoot. He's also an elite spacer. He understands things well. Texas Tech is going to have to know where he is at all times. And a guy that makes Walter look a lot better, Ray J. Dennis. The transfer in there, he's the lead guard for the Baylor Bears. Leads them in assists with 6.4 per game. Now, he is turning the ball over 3.3 times per game. And we'll talk about him in the must-watch matchup as well as a Texas Tech guard here in just a minute. But he's a guy that really makes this Baylor offense go. And if you can create headaches for Ray J. Dennis, that will put Baylor behind the eight ball just a little bit more and create a better opportunity for Texas Tech to pull off the upset down in Waco. Now, a guy that has developed his game just exponentially over his time, not only at West Virginia, but also at Baylor is Jalen Bridges. He's a versatile vet. He's 6'8", really athletic and has become a really good shooter now. During his time at West Virginia, he really wasn't much of a shooter, but now he really is. He's shooting 40% from three. He's a guy that's going to create a ton of issues for Texas Tech in the sense of, yeah, they have a center that's good as well, but Bridges can come in and also add another height perspective with an athletic base as well to really disrupt Texas Tech, not only on the glass offensively, but defensively as well and create a couple of extra possessions for the Baylor Bears. All right, the must-watch matchup in this one for me, it's pretty simple. I want to see Joe Toussaint against Ray J. Dennis. Joe Toussaint was brought in here to be the lead guard for Texas Tech in terms of being the primary ball handler, but also a really good defender. He's going to have to have a lights-out night for Texas Tech on the defensive end to create headaches for Ray J. Davis if Texas Tech wants – Ray J. Dennis, excuse me – if Texas Tech wants to pull off the upset. It's really that simple. 3.3 turnovers per game for Dennis, the lead guard for Baylor. Can Joe Toussaint make him uncomfortable and force Baylor to do things that are out of the ordinary for the Bears? Now, there's talent around him that they could win the game even if this happens, could the Bears, but this is a step in a the right direction and a monumental step in the right direction if Texas Tech wants to pull off the upset. I'm watching that matchup of the point guards of Joe Toussaint and Ray J. Dennis in this one. Now for the Texas Tech at Baylor odds, if you look at Bart Torvark, his T-ranks, the Baylor Bears are five and a half point favorites in this one. And according to his metrics, Baylor has a 75% chance of winning this game. You see my prediction down on the bottom of your screen. I have Baylor winning this one 81-73. I think Baylor is just starting to heat up. They had a three-game losing streak in conference play. They're starting to heat back up again, 
and Scott Drew is headed in the right direction. I'm interested to see if this bug that Texas Tech had in terms of it sounds like it's the flu that a lot of guys had. Are they back in shape? Do they got enough fluids in them or is it headed south in terms of maybe it takes another, you know, two or three days for everybody to feel right? It'll be interesting to see, but that's what I've got. Baylor winning 81 to 73. Let me know your score prediction down on the pin comment below for Texas Tech at Baylor. It should be a good one. I'm interested to see. I hope the camera angle is much improved, to be honest, um, but. I know it won't be in that regard. That's the only slight I can throw at Baylor in that in that aspect of things. All right, I'm RC Maxfield reminding you, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long right here on the most engaging Texas Tech community on YouTube. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast, Jen.